fellow viewers, it is yet another time for us to delve into God's Word on this program, The Sanctuary, The Gospel and Symbols. As you know, on this program, I bring you some inspiring word from God's servants, where we also delve into God's plan for man's salvation. We are able to identify the areas in our Christian life that we constantly need to pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us so we can be counted worthy of as God's children who are being prepared to meet their kin. So thank you for being committed to join with us every Sunday when we come your way with this program, The Sanctuary, The Gospel and Symbols. I want to thank all of you who have also so far contributed to the Hope Club 1000 initiative. Yes, it offers you and I the opportunity to contribute our widow's might, 100 Ghana cities monthly, to support the continuation in the programming that we have for you on this channel. Like we say here on Hope Channel, we are always changing lives. And so with such inspirational Christian content, your contributions will go a long way to sustain the very things we are doing. So I entreat you to pick the number scrolling on your set now and indicate your name and contact number for the producers to reach out to you. And then, yes, you become an exciting member of the Hope Club 1000. Thank you for responding to this call to be part of God's work. Today, Pastor Emmanuel Champon, uh, who pastors the Blessed Assurance and the Adventist Church, and now has been moved to Achimota district yeah. and is with the Accra City Conference, has joined us. And also Elder Ernest Kusia Bebio, who worships with the Prince Emmanuel St. Adventist Church. And an elder of the church is also here with me. Uh, both are looking hale and hearty, and I bless God for their lives. Good to see you, Elder and Pastor. Good, Good to, to see, see you, Charles. Charles. And I hope you are doing well with your families. By God's grace. The Lord is good. We thank God. Amen. And you, the viewer, too, thank you uh, that you have always stayed with us. And I trust you are doing well. We would, would invite you to take your Bibles and whisper a word of prayer, uh, even as we have done so on set whilst we start the uh, discussions. Today, as a follow-up to our last episode, we are studying Christ's ministration in the most holy place. If there was ever any important topic you should stick with and study with us, it is this particular topic. You recall that in a previous episode, we had spoken extensively about the investigative judgment and also the uh, biblical calendar calculations, which ended us with the 1844, the 2300-day prophecy and about the sanctuary being cleansed. So this study is a following up to that particular discussion we had on set. So uh, I invite you to uh, make sure that you take note of the Bible text. We'll be making very good use of the book of Hebrews, chapters uh, 8, 9, and 10, and other verses, uh, Bible quotations that mm. my resource persons will help us with. So, Pastor, let me begin with you to refresh yes. the memory of our viewers. Yes. In the earthly sanctuary, mm -hmm. we know that we had, a, we had priests and we had a high priest. Yes. And so uh, it was not every priest who was a high priest. Is that the case? No, no. So we had a person or who at a point in time assumes the office of the high priest. Yes, we have only one high priest. Only one? Only one high priest. Okay. And thank God the Bible is so clear. And since we as Christians, we have to understand that we follow what the Bible tells us or in you know direct us to okay there's only one high priest okay and at the moment we still have only one high priest and that is jesus christ okay and he is in the most holy place all right so i just want us to understand and emphasize and establish that. this so there, there there is at no point in time would we have more than one high priest no god didn't make it so okay when the high priest dies or is off his post, there's another high priest who supposedly, in the past, who we'll read from the Bible, okay. who is, I mean, uh, the, the installed. His, uh, is okay. installed. Okay. Uh, in the past, he used to be the first son or the one, I mean, the, the son of the, mm -hmm. pre, uh, the, the one Previous who son. has, I mean, uh, okay. passed. Okay. That's the. Uh, All right. So, amongst these high priests that we, uh, priests that we have one high priest, mm -hmm. In the biblical sanctuary times, yes. could you refresh the uh, memories of our viewers and all of us? What exactly is this high priest supposed to do in the service of the sanctuary? 
Okay. Thank you, Charles, for that question. But before we go in, uh, just as you said, as a refresh, refreshing our memories, uh, our minds also, let us understand from Daniel chapter 8, verses 14. See, that is where the sanctuary doctrine, uh, in a way, we can say that emanates or begins. I mean, uh, he says, you, you can read it. And Daniel. he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And we have noticed the last time that we met when the sanctuary was being cleansed. And that one we can also read from uh, uh, Leviticus. Okay. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Leviticus uh, 23. Because uh, we are going to, we, uh, our studies today will hinder on uh, what the high priest does in the past so that then we will understand what Christ is also doing as the high priest. Okay. So uh, Leviticus 23, mm -hmm. verse 27. Okay, Leviticus 23, 27, it reads, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, okay. there shall be a day of atonement. Okay. It, shall, it shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Good. So this is, that, is, that talks about the day the, of atonement. That's right. And at the moment, the Day of Atonement, it, the high priest is the only person who goes into the most holy place. Okay. And where we are, through all the studies that we have had, mm -hmm. all the episodes that we have had, we are at the moment in, in the, the most, most, holy, most holy place. That's, right. That's the work of Christ as the high priest. Okay. And just as the high priest does in the past mm -hmm. as a type which... Christ in the most holy place as the antitype. That is where we are going to, you know, understand what Christ is doing for us at the moment. So Christ being <coughs> in the most holy place, um, just as we have read from Leviticus, mm -hmm. we will read from um, Exodus 29. Okay. Exodus 29. 29. We'll read some portions of... Uh, uh, quotations. Okay. Uh, yes. Exodus 29, verse. Uh, let's read from uh, verse 38. Okay, verse 38. Now, this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. Day by day, continually. So, this is the daily services that is done in the most in the holy place okay day by day okay now we are going to move into now read uh, 42 for us verse 42 this shall be a continual bent offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the lord mm -hmm. where i will meet you to speak there unto thee okay and there I'll meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. Okay. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. In the priest's office. Okay. So this is the work of the priests. Mm -hmm. It is a sanctification work. And that is exactly what Christ is also doing for us in the most holy place and we are going to go into that one let us uh, read from uh, exodus 40. okay exodus 40 26 26 and 27. exodus chapter 40 verse 26 and 27. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil, mm -hmm. and he burnt sweet incense thereon, okay. as the Lord commanded Moses. Uh -huh. uh, continue on 21. And he 20, 20, 20, 20, 21. Okay, 30, 31, or verse 20, 21. Okay, so Exodus 40, verse 20 and 21. Uh -huh. uh, and he took and put the testimony into the ark, Okay. And set the stars on the ark, and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the covering, and covered the ark of the testimony, as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, and so, and you have already read the 26 and 27. That's right. Okay, so now Christ 
is in the most holy place, mm -hmm. just as the high priest does in his time. Mm -hmm. This is what Christ is doing at the moment. He is doing the mediatorial work on our behalf. Christ is doing his mediatorial work. That's Christ is uh, 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 doing the redemptive work for each person on earth at the moment. So before we go into the um, establishing the linkage between what the earthly high priest was doing with what Jesus Christ is doing in the most holy place, Lord, I want to bring you into the conversation. I also mm -hmm. remember on the day of, in one of our episodes where we studied the day of atonement, uh, we spoke extensively about uh, all the things, I won't say rituals, but the very important things that the high priest does in the most holy place. Uh, could you just help our uh, viewers refresh our memory on these aspects as well? Right. Uh, <clears throat> the practice of the, most, of the high priest in the most holy, um, we have talked about it before, yeah. that the high priest would go into the most holy with incense, mm -hmm. with incense and the censer, and the blood of the bull and that of the goat. That's right. Um, the, the incense was to perfume the place literally, but spiritually was to also veil himself from the Shekinah glory of the Lord, because man should not look into the glory of the Lord. And so as the smoke uh, rises up and fills the most holy, there is not direct uh, uh, vis visualization of, of, the, of the Shekinah okay. glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He goes to sprinkle blood seven times on the western side mm -hmm. and seven times in the eastern side, that is in front. Mm -hmm. And then he was sprinkled on the mercy seat once. Mm. Then after that, he prays and then he finishes his job of interceding for or atoning for the for the sins of the of the congregation and uh, spiritually takes all the sins that have been deposited over the year in the sanctuary mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. but before before even before then let us also note that the there are objects in the sanctuary that are also atoned okay. on this day. Okay. And the altar of sacrifice, mm -hmm. the altar of incense, mm -hmm. and the ark itself. So all those objects that were involved in, in, receiving, in, in receiving, you know, blood. sin, okay. kind of, okay. were atoned okay. on that day. Okay. And after he is finished and he comes out, he would go and burn the burnt offering that was the rum, the daily, like the daily activity that was going on. Mm -hmm. He would burn the, the, the burnt offering. Okay. And then he would use the blood to touch the four corners of the horns of the altar of sacrifice also. Mm. And then he would now come and pray over the Azazel. And the Azazel is taken into the... Into the into wilderness. the wilderness where it will go and die. Okay. And as he he hits the ground with a censer, showing the end of the service and proclaiming the benediction. Mm -hmm. Anyone who had not confessed sins before he came out would die. Because it was an executive judgment. Would die. Mm -hmm. If you had confess your sins, and you had no problem with God, you will live. Mm -hmm. And so um, we also need to describe that the Azazel uh, is standing for, for the devil, for Satan, mm -hmm. that eventually Satan will carry all the sins of the world. Mm. Because all those sins that have been taken away from the Most Holy are actually downloaded onto the Azazel, the goat. And you know, if you have heard about people calling the devil as a goat, mm. it is true that he is the goat. Mm. Because, you know, there is this, um, 
uh, what do you call it? Male, female, uh, 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 um, what do you call it? Um, creature mm -hmm. called Baphomet. Mm -hmm. If you have seen people make the sign. Yes, yes. I think you have seen it. Yes, footballers do that. Very a good. It is not an ordinary sign. It is a sign of Baphomet, the goat. So these are the horns, and this is the head. Mm. And that is a sign, a salute for Satan. It is a salute for Satan. That is to say that, I am with the, de the devil. And they are acknowledging that he, they have received some inspiration. Exactly. And it's a Luciferian sign. Interesting. We, there's no ordinary people who do it. Mm. So if you do not understand and you're just doing it, then that is the re that's the meaning. Indeed, for the uninitiated, you see these celebrities, Just supposedly, good. musicians, well, footballers. Oh. And Charles, don't forget that Satan has said that this world belongs to him. Right. And he gives to anyone he likes. Absolutely. It is, it is his prerogative. He told Jesus Christ. So if you want power, mm -hmm. if you want fame, money, if you want uh, position, uh, position Money. Influence. That's it. Come to me. Yes, he will give you. So I won't be surprised that celebrities are using that sign. This is an important tradition. Because you never know where they got their voices from. So this symbol they do is that of the Baphomet. It's Baphomet. Baphomet. Yes, Baphomet. Mm. He's an androgenic uh, creature. That is Satan himself. Mm. And in, this, in, the, in the church of Satan, the they have that sign. Interest. I believe that believers are taking cues from this revelations and we are guided. So, right. Elder, we thank God for this uh, overview of what the, uh, the high priest was doing in the most holy places. But yeah. interestingly, in the New Testament, now the Apostle Paul now elevates readers' minds to who the real true high priest mm. is in his work. Okay. And would you mind taking us into this aspect of our conversation? Because in, when we studied the last time, uh, the biblical calendar, we knew that in 1844, right. Jesus Christ entered the most holy place. Right. And I remember you made one submission that it was the beginning of one of the most important milestones for every believer. Yes. You would wish to now throw more light. So why has Jesus entered the most holy place okay. now? And what is he doing there for us? Okay, very good. We know that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven from Mount Olivet when he was with the, the disciples, uh, with the disciples and he started That's ascending mm -hmm. and the angels came and said, why are you sad? Mm. This same Jesus you see going, mm. he will come in the same, same manner. manner. Yeah. So where did Jesus go when he ascended into heaven? Right. In the first place. Mm -hmm. We go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 12. Okay. okay. Revelation 1 12. 12 and 13. Okay, so Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Yes. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, mm -hmm. clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Very good. His head and his hairs were white like wool, hmm. as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Yes, so this is Christ we are talking about. Hmm. And when John saw Christ, he couldn't recognize him. Why? Because you just described him. His hair was what? <laughs> his head. Mm. The very head was what? Were white. And, and the hair. Yes, were white like wool. Very good. And his eyes. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Well, when you read the 15 and coming down, it mm -hmm. describes to you his nature. Mm -hmm. His feet. Like unto fine brass. Mm -hmm. As if they burned in the furnace. Mm -hmm. And his voice has the sound of many waters. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Yes. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Mm. This Amen. is not the carpenter's son. Mm. <laughs> no. John did not see a carpenter's son. He knew the carpenter's he son. He knew him, but this time right. he is seeing Christ this divine. Glory. Praise God. This is Christ divine, God himself. And he could not. 
he had to bow and prostrate. Now, it is very interesting the, his, his attire, mm -hmm. his garment. Yes. He is presented as a priest. Right. A priest with, right. the, with a white robe, yes. with a ghetto, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 the chest. Yeah. That is how the priest dressed, mm -hmm. going, working in the sanctuary. Okay. Now, we need to understand that Christ's priesthood is different from the earthly priesthood. Okay. We need to state this. Okay. The earthly priesthood was after the likeness of, the, of Aaron. Aaron. So we call it the Levitical priesthood or the Aaronic priesthood. Okay. Where man is the one presented as the high priest. Mm -hmm. But man does not live forever. Mm -hmm. Man dies. So after the death of a priesthood, another has to be what? Uh, 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 appointed. Yeah. And moreover, every year, there should be a day of atonement. So this was not a perfect system. Okay. This was not a perfect system. But when we read Hebrews chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7 verse uh, 19. Verse 19. Yeah, you read from 19 to, to uh, chapter 7 uh, verse 1 to 2. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope, dead, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Praise and God. they truly were many and they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Mm -hmm. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Praise God. Amen. Now, Jesus Christ, priesthood, the Bible says is of the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Right. Why? Why is his order after, after that of Melchizedek? Well, when we read about Melchizedek, it's very interesting. In Ge Genesis chapter 14. All right. We are not going to go there, but okay. uh, the, the Melchizedek is a king. Mm -hmm. And if he is a king, then he he's, he's from the tribe of Judah. Right. But the, Ju but the, but the tribe of Judah, they don't, they don't serve in the sanctuary. Okay. It is, it is the tribe of Levi, Levi who serve in the sanctuary. Okay. So if Christ... is after the order. If, but Christ is from the tribe of Judah. Mm. So how is he a priest? That's, that's that is why his priesthood cannot be that of the Levitical system, mm. but of the Melchizedek system. Because Melchizedek was a king and was a priest, a priest. Of, of God at the same time. Mm. But he didn't have a father, he didn't have a mother. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. I don't know, but it seems like nobody recorded uh, his parents <laughs> or whether Melchizedek actually represented God, uh, Christ himself, but mm. it, it, it does not because he said he was a king of Salem. Yeah. But his priesthood is a unique priesthood because it is not of the order of, of Levi okay. or, or, or the Levi Levitical system. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ's priesthood is a different priesthood altogether mm. of the order of Melchizedek from the tribe of Judah. Mm. Okay? And, and when we read, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Hebrews chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Let's read from 23 okay. to uh, uh, 26. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, okay. which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that, that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holy place every year mm -hmm. with blood wow. of others. Mm -hmm. For, so, verse 26. Yes. 
For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of Praise himself. Praise God. Amen. This is the perfect sacrifice. Once. Ekume. But ekume. <laughs> ekume. <laughs> you know, just yeah. once. Yeah. But that is enough. Mm. You know, sin has done something. Satan has done something to this universe. Eh? Hmm. Even heaven itself, heaven itself, had been was tainted with sin. With sin, because of Satan, hmm. and Christ's blood had to atone for heaven itself. Entered with his own blood. He entered into the heavenly place with his own blood to atone for heaven itself. Because sin can only be remitted through the shedding of blood. of blood. Satan has done something to this world. Eh? Hmm. Anyone who is following after Satan, you need to be extremely careful. Because one day, when the wrath of God arises, you will not live. Hmm. Because what sin has done to God, it will never happen again. Amen. It will never, Amen. ever happen again. That is why the Bible says, in, I think in the... Uh, Nehum, that affliction mm -hmm. shall not rise up again. Mm. One nine. It will not. Mm. It has done too much harm to this universe. Mm. And so Jesus Christ himself, when he ascended, first he went into the holy place. As we read from Revelation 1.12 and right. 13. He went into the holy place. And then in 1844, after the 2300 day prophecy, we have come to understand that he entered the into the most holy. holy. Yeah. So what is he doing in the most holy? What is he doing in the most holy? In Revelation chapter 14. 14. Mm -hmm. 14. Revelation 14. Mm -hmm. Verse. Revelation 14. Verse. Six okay. and seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So we have explained this also before. Yes. But now the emphasis is, the hour of his judgment has come. He didn't say the hour of his judgment is coming. But it has come. It has already occurred. So what happened, as we explained, that in 1844, Jesus Christ entered into the most holy. And as the, the earlier Adventists had understood the, the 1844 to have meant the executive judgment. Mm -hmm. Rather, it was not the executive judgment. Because okay. e executive judgment would have meant that Christ should have come on earth. Mm -hmm. But they understood this, as I explained, they understood it because of the earthly sanctuary mm -hmm. as an executive pronouncement. That's right. But it wasn't. But I had also explained in Revelation chapter 10 mm -hmm. that that was a prophecy Mm -hmm. And it was specific for the Seventh day Adventist Church. Mm. Because if you, if, you, if you recall, in Revelation chapter 10, he said they should go and prophesy again. That's right. In verse um, chapter 10, um, from, from, just read from 11, 8 to 11, please. Okay. Just read for eight, that for me. Chapter 10, verse 18. And the voice which I heard from heaven speak unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and so, so when we heard the news right. about the cleansing of the sanctuary, the 2000 day prophecy, ending in 1844, the understanding and, try and, 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 and uh, uh, aligning this to the earthly sanctuary, it was understood that there was going to be executive judgment. Unfortunately, 
it didn't happen that. And it was good news. That's why it, it was It was honey. good news. That's why it was honey yes. in the mouth. Okay. But when it went into the tummy, it was bitter. Mm -hmm. Because when they understood and the day came and there was no judgment, mm. it was a big disappointment. We call it, we call it the day of lamentation for mm. the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm. Because the Millerites, who were the uh, 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 forbearers of, of, of the church, got so disappointed. Right. But what did the angel say? He said they should go and, and prophesy, prophesy again. Unto and many peoples. Uh, unto many people. That is why we are continuing the work. So what we are doing is actually to tell the world that Jesus is coming again. Praise God. And this time, we are not giving any date because we don't know when he is coming. Right. But we can be sure that the signs of the times are pointing to an imminent return. coming or return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Jesus Christ in the most holy place uh, in Revelation 14, 7 is saying that his judgment has come. Mm. If his judgment has come and it is not the executive judgment, then what was the judgment? Mm. So we understood that to mean the inv investigative judgment. judgment. Where every case from the time of Adam till now, until Christ come, is being investigated. And, and like the other time, I was saying that when you go to the court, uh, the judge does not just pronounce guilty or not guilty until your case has been investigated. Mm -hmm. So when he, he uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the gavel, when he, 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 hits, That's right. he hits it, it means that he's finished. Mm. And he knows that you are guilty or you are not guilty. Mm -hmm. So Jesus Christ is investigating all cases until he comes and that is what we that is why the judgment has come mm. so he has started a certain judgment and as we speak now that judgment is going on and it's been done by jesus Christ. it is mm. being by done by him in the most holy in place. the most holy place mm -hmm. in the most holy place but that is not the only job he's doing though okay what else is he doing? when you go to one john the epistle one mm -hmm. john chapter 2 verse 1 mm. 1 john 2 verse 1 yes, yes. Let's this is what he said. My little children, mm -hmm. these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Mm -hmm. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the you whole know, world. You know, in the holy place, we're not supposed to sin. In fact, every person that has been uh, 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 that has accepted Christ as a personal savior and Jesus has baptized with the Holy Spirit. Right. You are not supposed to sin. Right. You don't sin. Right. You, can, you can make mistakes. Yeah. You, can, you can falter. Right. But you don't sin. Right. You know, to, 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 to be a sinner means that sin has dominion over your life. Sin reigns over you. Mm -hmm. We are a sinner. Mm. But for those who have the Holy Spirit, they can make mistakes. That's how the Bible let us understand. Mm -hmm. So you don't sin because in, in, in 1 John, uh, sorry, uh, 1 John 3, 9, he says that who, the one who has the seed of, 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 of God in him does, does not, not sin. sin. You understand? Yeah. So that's what it is. The, but because we are still on earth, you can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't want to sin, Satan will, can do something for you to be angry. Mm -hmm. And so still there should be a provision mm -hmm to blot out such sins or such mistakes that may occur with even uh, those who have accepted Jesus Christ. Mm. And so Jesus continues his mediatorial work mm. as an advocate. Mm -hmm. We call him the paracletus. He is working like the, like the Holy Spirit, okay, a comforter. Yeah, so if we, if we should do something wrong, all right, there is some blood in the holy place. Most of the places. Yeah. On the altar of the incense. Right. It is touched with blood. Mm -hmm. That is the essence. Mm -hmm. You know, as for the cleansing, it is done in the altar court. Okay. With all the blood that uh, 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 is collected. Yeah. But in the holy place, there is no animal sacrifice. No. But there is some blood. Mm -hmm. that, that is why when you have the Holy Spirit, you should not be found to be sinning uh, continuously. 
and consistent like you used to that you used to be then where is the power of the holy spirit mm. if you are a christian and there hasn't been a change in your life and you are still continuing in the your old ways i'm sorry you have not received the holy spirit or you received him but he has left mm. because if the holy spirit is in you he would bring about the transformation which the last time you explained to exactly. us bearing the fruit of the exactly. Spirit. Exactly, you will bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So from pride to humility. Exactly. Hatred to love. Exactly. So if you are telling me you have the Holy Spirit and you are still living your old ways, I'm sorry. This is not true. Don't be deceived. The Spirit of God cannot dwell in a heart who is drinking, who is uh, uh, gossiping, who is angry, mm. who is envious and jealous and, and, and fornicating and, and doing the same things and yet you say the Spirit of God is in you. How? Because you are speaking in tongues. Mm. That is a lie. That is deception. The proof of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you is a new character. Amen. And that is why uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 is saying that uh, if anyone, if is, anyone in is in Christ, he's a new, he's a new creature. All things are gone. All things have become new. Praise you God. should be new. But just in case you are driving and somebody crosses you and you become mm. angry mm. and you may, you may even insult, you know, involuntarily. Mm. Of course, there's little blood there to take care. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. So Jesus Christ. His work in the, in the Most Holy is mediatorial mm -hmm. and also investigative. Mm -hmm. he's, he's doing his investigative work at the same time making sure that anyone who needs redemption or who, one of his children who falls mm -hmm. would, would be brought up. Thank you, Elder, for explaining such in detail all of this. Now, the next 15 minutes that will be wrapping up, mm -hmm. I want us to help the viewers with the help of the Holy Spirit bring the lesson home to us now. Okay. So, Pastor, let me begin with you. So, for a believer watching us, yes. knowing that Jesus Christ, our high priest, the one after the order of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. is in the most holy place, serving as a mediator, advocate, and undertaking an investigation, investigative judgment, what should it mean for a believer? What should this mean for him in his work with Jesus Christ? What should it mean for him? Well, uh, this is a time of, like in the olden time, you see, we are studying about the sanctuary. Now, at the Day of Atonement, that is the time that everyone needs to begin to uh, 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 look at yourself. Search me, oh God. I know my and heart. know today. my heart. Try me. Try me. Uh, uh, you see, so this is the situation. Each one has to evaluate himself. It is the time of evaluation. Because Jesus Christ, after, just as Elder has explained to us, his mediatorial work, once it is ceased, and it is ceased, and he is going to come, and when he comes, when he comes, he is coming as a judge. We have to understand that. Now, Jesus has done his work for us as a mediator. But when we read from John 5, 22, we have to understand that so that we will be mindful. Because if we don't know this, then it will be like, Oh, uh, you have been pardoned. There was a, 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 um, a reading that I read some time ago that uh, there is this uh, uh, philanthropist uh, who, when uh, uh, you happen to make a mistake on the road, especially like uh, in U.S., you are caught. And then you are taken to court and then you are, uh, uh, you are going to be judged. You are going to be judged because you have sinned. He goes and then pays for you. When he pays for you, it doesn't mean that go back to the road and then escape, uh, uh, escape commit, me, the, traffic co commit the same traffic. Mm, offense, mm -hmm. Now, when this person doing this will be at a time when you will need him, he will not be that 
person who pays for your fine fans your fines but he is going to say judge him let's uh, read uh, john uh, john 5 22. 22 yes for the father judgeth no man but hath committed all judgment unto his son yes so jesus christ is going to come back is going to uh, after his mediatorial work he is going to be a judge and we have to understand viewers please let us understand that this is our warning time this is the time like david we have to call unto the father to cleanse us and to wash us like psalm 51 maybe we should read that so that uh, i mean if uh, 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 it is going to be another way for us psalm to 51. see the father uh, psalm 51 if we can read uh, let's read it so that uh, I ha have mercy upon me O god okay. according to thy you loving see? kindness yes according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions we should ask god to blot out our transgressions because what? this is the time he can do that this is our opportunity yes go ahead wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity yes and cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight yes that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest Behold, I was shaping iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yes. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop. Yes, exactly. Verse 7 is what I am looking for. And I shall be clean. We need to ask the Lord to purge us with hyssop. This reminds me in the past. Uh, uh, when was it uh, when there was this... Uh, 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 when they went into moon and then this eye uh, thing, uh, we, were, uh, we were having this eye problems. Uh, Apollo. Apollo. Apollo 16. Or was Apollo it Apollo 7? Apollo 17 or Apollo 11? Mm. Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Mm. And this Apollo thing, and, and there, are, there will be some bristles mm -hmm. on us. Bl blisters. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we go, there's a particular. Uh, leaf or tree mm -hmm. that we go and then pluck its mm -hmm. leaves mm -hmm. and then we use it to wash the 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 the, 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 the bristles and it becomes red mm. and that one that that leaf mm -hmm. was the one that heals us from mm. that it, it reminds <laughs> us of that mm. and that's why you say that peg me mm. we need to ask the lord to purge us and i shall because, be clean yes wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Yes. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Go to verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins, oh. and blot out all my iniquities. And create in me a clean heart, uh -huh. O God, and renew a right spirit within this me. This is all that we need to uh, ask the Lord. And okay. he is ready to do that for us. In yeah. this, his investigative, in, in his this uh, mediatorial, uh, uh, work that he's doing for us because he is going to come and then judge us again how can this man if he has mediated for you if he has mediated for me for us and then when he is coming as a judge how can we accuse him for being judgmental or partial uh, uh, this is what we have to understand else we might see jesus as a judge but before he becomes a judge he has already been your mediator, your advocator, your advocate. Mm. Who is advocating for us? Mm. Brethren, friends, viewers, please, this is your chance. This is my chance. Let us ask the Lord to cleanse us, mm. to wash us. He's ready to put his robe, his righteous robe on us All right. so that he will present us faithful before the father okay Charles. Father. in answering this your your question what, what 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 does that mean to us jesus christ being our advocate and in the most holy what does it mean to every christian right. now we should we should paul paul write into the book of of in the book of hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 in verse 16 let's hebrews, start from 15 to 16. okay hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. yes 
For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yes. yet without sin. Mm. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time I of need. I want to assure my fellow believers and Christians that we have a loving Savior in Amen. Jesus Christ. Mm. He is saying we should come boldly. Yes. Why? Because he has given us his spirit. Mm. As a Christian, and loving Christ so much, when, when you offend Christ, it hurts. It really hurts that because of some, something, you might have insulted somebody, you might have been angry with somebody, you might have done something very nasty, which ordinarily you wouldn't have done. Listen, my good friend, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, Proverbs 24, verse 16. Okay. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Verse 16, 16 yes. And um, this is the word of God. Proverbs yes. 24, 16. Yes. For a just man falleth seven times, mm -hmm. and rise up, uh, rises God. up again, mm -hmm. but the wicked shall fall into yes. mischief. Yes. So I want to assure you mm -hmm. that even if you should fall seven times, mm -hmm. there is a saving grace Amen. that will Amen. still lift you up. Amen. Do not remain there. Amen. Christ has not forsaken you. Mm -hmm. yes. he, his, it is his blood. Mm -hmm he used to purchase you. Mm. Christ will not just abandon you like that. No, no that will be a bad investment. Mm. He loves you. He wants to save you. If you wrong him, mm. he is the advocate. If he knew that, even when you are in the holy place, there may be times that you may fall. Mm. That is why he continues his advocacy role. Mm. Therefore, take, take uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, um, uh, make use of it. Mm -hmm. Take the opportunity. Yes. Go back to him mm -hmm. and confess. Mm -hmm. He will blot it out with mm -hmm. the blood in the holy place on the, on the altar of the incense. Mm -hmm. So let us not be discouraged. No. Let us not. Yeah. Satan would want to discourage us. Mm -hmm. But do not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Believe in the saving power. For that blood is the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. And it is able to save us even to the uttermost. Amen. Christ is able to save us to the uttermost. Yes. Let no Christian, any genuine Christian who have accepted Christ as his personal savior and has the Holy Spirit transforming power seen in his life ever say that I have been rejected by God. No, no. The Holy Spirit will not just leave you because you did something, uh, something wrong. No, that's not how the Holy Spirit leaves. You have to consistently, persistently refuse his counsel before he will leave. That's how he, that's how he will leave. But... Mm. If you do something wrong, please accept that you have, have wronged. Let's say you even, if you did something very nasty, you mm. even fell. As a married man, mm. you went to sleep with someone. You have, you have fallen, you have committed adultery. Yes, God. but if you have repented of it, go to your God. Amen. He is able to blot out your transgression Amen. and you'll be saved. Amen. Come boldly. Do not let the devil deceive you mm. into thinking that, oh, your sin is too much. You can mm. never, you cannot be forgiven. There is no sin in this world. Even if you have killed, Jesus. even if you have stolen, even if you are a prostitute, mm. whatever sin you have entered, even if you have worshiped the devil, today, if you decide that, I have stopped Amen. and I'm going to Amen. worship Jesus. Amen. You are saved. Amen. That's, that's how Christ is able to save you. Amen. Christ is the one who created you. He yes. is the one who has redeemed you through his blood. Yes. He is never going to forsake you. Amen. Be reassured that we have a saving, we have a loving savior mm. and his saving grace is always available mm. for us. Elder, in fact, I, I wanted us to explore this theme a bit more as we wrap up. Right. This verse you gave us, right. it says that we have an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling Feelings. of our infirmities. Yes. We have not an high priest yes, exactly. which cannot be touched. Exactly. But was in all points yes. tempted like us. I mean, uh, uh, let see, us bring home this lesson you, for our You see, when God, wants, when God wants to uh, 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 interact with man, mm. eh, he has to come in our nature. Mm. In our very nature, God himself had to come in our very nature. Mm. And he has created us, yeah. but he is not God. He is not, he is not a human mm. being, he is God. Yeah. Mm. So for him to know and for us to appreciate him better, mm -hmm. he came in our nature. Mm. And, and like in, in Galatians 4.4, 4, mm -hmm. he, he, he was born by a woman, mm -hmm. born under the law, mm. which means he, 
he, he made himself available mm. to the point that he could even fall mm. because he was not protected. Mm. But in all this, mm -hmm. relying on his father, mm -hmm. he never sinned. Mm. And that is why he qualifies to save us. Mm. But he has tasted all our infirmities. He is touched with it. He is touched with he, it. He, he has he the knows. ability to feel it. Well, at times, Christ cried. He wept mm. over, over, over our situation. It, mm. was, it, was, it was sorrowful mm. that man should be like this. This is not the way I created mm. human beings. But sin has brought us this low. But still... God is not done with us yet. Amen. He is still working on our behalf. Mm -hmm. He is our advocate. And I'm imagining Paul using this language of Christ, the high priest, being touched with the infirmities, and he's recalling, you remember in scripture when Jesus would look onto the multitude, right. and scripture will say that, you know, he could, he, he was touched he with was their touched. hunger, and he could, he, see, feed them. he could feed them. Their illnesses. He, he could feed, so this is the language that the apostle Paul exactly. is employing here, for us to see that indeed, really, this is the kind of person we have. You see, we, we, Christ is not presenting him as deity, mm. as if he is God. That is why One he is able to. He was able to overcome all these things. Mm. He was able to overcome in in the flesh, mm. in in his humanity, but his reliance on the Father. But all that he's saying is that look, I have I have gone through all that you've gone through. You are mm. going through, mm. but because I depend on my Father, I never sinned. Definitely. If you will depend on me, you will be victorious. Praise you God. see, and, 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 and the beauty of it is that in spite of all the stupid things I have done, mm. if today I say I am not doing it again mm. and I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ, he says all your sins have been paid for. for Amen. It has been paid for. Mm. You are not a sinner. Mm. I don't even remember that you did anything. Mm. You killed somebody? No, I don't remember. Mm. You insulted somebody? No, I don't remember. Mm. You stole? No, I don't remember. All I care about is that today you have given your life to me. Mm. And I am going to make sure that I'll give you the spirit mm. so that you don't return to your past mm. so you can make it into glory. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I think this Amen. is a beautiful thing. Indeed, viewers, uh, as, we, as we wrap this particular study up, I can only imagine the invitation which, like in the wilderness, mm. when the uh, serpents were biting the Israelites and the brazen serpent was mm. lifted up in mm. the wilderness mm. and there was a call on them to look and live. Mm. Uh, as Jesus Christ is in the most holy place, mediating on our behalf, there's an invitation for us to behold him in the most holy oh, place. Yes. Because as we look unto him in his current role for us and on our behalf, then we can always remember that he is touched with our grief mm. and he's able to save us to the uttermost. It is my prayer that as you go through this study with us, you would find ways to come back to God from wherever you have mm. been to. Because like the hymn writer said, we may have wandered far away from home, mm. but let us today say that, Lord, we are coming home. Thank you, Elder and Escusia Babiu. Thank you, Pastor Emmanuel Champon. And thank you, the viewer, for joining us today to study Christ, our high priest, in the most holy place. I believe you have been blessed, just as I have been blessed. See you same time next week, and God bless you. I've been your host, Charles Watanelabe. We'll see you. Say bless. Bye-bye.